Hi everyone, it's Sumi Chris and welcome to a new video. Uh, as most of you know, I have been vegan for four years and I struggle with many, many health issues from it. And now I found myself healing on a more ketogenic uh, carnivore based diet. And along these past months, I have gotten to know many great people like Michael over here. Uh, who have a lot of knowledge about nutrition and uh, Michael once made a video about me and that's how I found out about his channel about the heal your gut guys channel that doesn't sound and weird <laughs> not at all <laughs> but it made me very intrigued uh, very interested because I started binge watching some of your videos and um, yeah we came into contact and um, yeah he, he healed his own gut and it sounded very interesting to me, his experience, because he uh, mentioned many similar symptoms to mine. And I thought it would be really nice having you on here on my channel and sharing your, your story, because um, I think it will give a lot more insight to uh, my audience, because they have heard my, heard my story, but you are someone who have healed his gut and you can now eat, enjoy more foods. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it would be really nice to for you to introduce yourself and share your story on here so please who, who are you and and how <laughs> did you heal your gut uh hi guys uh my name is mike the heal your gut guy i started doing this because i was diagnosed with crohn's disease about 10 years ago like right out of college and i went the traditional route where i tried different drugs and and even when they first told me, like, hey, you need to be on these expensive, dangerous drugs that might give you leukemia for the rest of your life, I, I knew something wasn't, wasn't right. And, and even when I was on these drugs, I was constantly trying, like, different things. But, um, but yeah, I had, you know, leaky gut, whatever you want to call it, and it manifested itself as Crohn's disease, and I had lots of diarrhea and just food intolerances in general. And, yeah, I also had um, candida is also a really popular problem nowadays, and that was something else I also suffered from. But it's all about, it's all about understanding what gut inflammation is because, um, you know, all these gut diseases are just inflammation of the gut. Colitis, the itis, means your colon's inflamed. Uh, Crohn's disease means... You're from mouth to buttholes inflamed. And so once we understand what inflammation is, and inflammation is just your body's response to injury. If I punch myself in the arm, it's going to become inflamed to heal that injury. And that goes through everything throughout the whole body. If you punish your stomach and your gut with hard to digest foods or eating glass or something like that, it's going to become inflamed. And so it's just about not injuring your gut and, and a few other things. And we're going to, we're going to talk about the few other things in a, in a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. but yeah. All right. Yeah. That sounds very like, logical to me. If you're constantly hurting yourself in one spot, it will be Mm -hmm. like damaging itself and it needs time to heal itself but if you keep poking it keep stabbing mm -hmm. it you will just open up the wound a lot more so mm -hmm. um yeah i have a, a couple of questions for you and okay. could you explain uh to me why you are eating the way you are eating has worked for you uh much better than the other diets you have tried because i i, I saw for example in in the book you had made mm -hmm. that you've tried a, a vegan diet and all sorts of other kinds <laughs> of diets. So what made this diet work for you better than the others? So the vegan diet was something I never tried. I did try vegetarianism for about a week and that was the longest I could tolerate it. But um, Whoa. the first diet that made me see the light was, was a, it's called the specific carbohydrate diet where you it's kind of like this elimination diet. It's very similar to GAPS. Um, it's not ketogenic, but th that's, and, and paleo, th those are all diets I've tried. And those are diets, they're great diets. You go on them and you feel like a million bucks in literally a couple weeks for most people. And 
Um, but I got my hands on the book uh, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston A. Price. And what Weston A. Price did, he, he was a dentist in the 1930s. And he traveled the world. I mean, he was a dentist, and he was wondering why all of his patients' teeth were rotting out of their heads. And he, you know, he couldn't figure out why. But his brother worked for National Geographic, and his brother was like, hey, we're finding these you know, primitive peoples in the jungle, and they have perfect teeth. Their teeth are, are white, they're straight, and they have no cavities. You should come check out and see what they're doing. And so he, he, he's like 70 when he does this, and this is the 1930s. You get in your Ford Model T on a dirt road to get to the airport. I don't know how he got to these places. Yeah. And he went to the Swiss Alps. He went to the Scottish uh, Isles. He went to, he went, he visited tribes along the Nile in Africa. He went to Australia. He went to the Polynesians. He went to New Zealand. He went to Alaska. I, he, he, he went all over. He went as, to as many places as he could. He went to Peru, and he saw that populations that were still on their indigenous diet had perfectly straight teeth, no cavities, and were practically immune to disease. And in certain places, people could see the moons of Jupiter without their glasses, like all sorts of, you know, no one had glasses. And when he went to primitives that had adopted a modern diet, everyone had cavities, yet they were brushing their teeth. And crooked teeth would start to show up, and people would be dying in droves of tuberculosis and stuff like that. And so when I was reading that book, and he's, he's in Peru, and he's in this, like, ancient Aztec town. And, and at this point, I'm still, like, on the fence. I'm like, I don't know. I should, maybe I should quit my drugs. I'm not really sure. So I'm reading his book, and he's going through this ancient tomb where they, they, they would bury their dead by putting their skulls in the tomb. And he's going through all these skulls, and... He went through a thousand of them, and he did not find one cavity, and all of them had straight teeth. And, and he noticed as he got closer to the mouth of the tomb, where the, the skulls were newer, um, he noticed that the skulls were thinner. The further he went back into the tomb, the skulls were thicker, and this is because even though they were still on their primitive diet, they were being affected by modern culture, and their and their skull was their skin, their mm-hmm. their their bones the weren't as thick. They weren't as you know. You want a thick thick skull and thick bones so your bones don't break. And so yeah. that's that's when I threw my drugs away and I said, "This is this has got to be the answer." And so I slowly started adopting a Weston A. Price dietary principles because these these people all ate very different things but they there's certain principles these people followed in order to be healthy um but i was eating this diet just word for word and i was still having issues and i was noticing a lot of people in these in the weston a price community were eating they were doing like the gaps diet for for five years, you know, an insane amount of time, and they still had an issue with starches. And I wanted to find out why, why we couldn't eat starches. Because every time I looked at a piece of bread, I was, I was like blacking out, and I needed, to, I needed to eat bread. Like, I just, my body was craving it so bad. I was like, and our ancestors, every single one, I'm not kidding you, every single one of our modern, of our ancestors we're eating bread or some sort of starch in some way. The only exception is the Eskimos. And, but, they, but they did their own way to get starch, and it was called glycogen. Mm-hmm. And they got it through blood and certain animal meats. So they weren't even ketosis. So this, it's, it's not natural. It's, so I, I, I wanted to follow that diet, but I, I had one hurdle, hurdle in my way. Um, I see. Yeah. But, uh, All right. Um, yeah. Then that, because of that book, then the Western A. Price book, this is really, um, was, uh, how would I say that? It really made a difference from all the other things you've tried. 
like it really was a significant book for you. Oh yeah, that when I yes, that when that was the proof that I needed to to like hold faith because but. Because before that, all you're going off of is, oh, I ate this food and I felt great. And, you know, you really can't it go off kind of that. It's, but with this, this was like concrete evidence you cannot argue with. So I was yeah. like, okay, this is how I should be eating. I should, this is, this is a, a clear-cut blueprint and it makes complete sense. So I'm going mm -hmm. to strive for this diet. And so after a few years of, you know, not being able to eat starches, I went to the doctor, or I went to a holistic doctor, I hate doctors, and um, they had me take like a stool test. And they said, hey, you have a fungal infection, and your gut microbiome's all messed up. And I said, how is that possible? I've been drinking raw milk every single day. And when I say drinking raw milk, I've been drinking like a half gallon every single day and raw yogurt every single day. Like there is no possible way my gut microbiome could be messed up. And they said, well, your test says you have a fungal infection. So there you go. And I said, all right. And so I went home and I started researching how fungus behaves. And, you know, if you go on YouTube right now and you Google or YouTube, fungus crawls through a maze. You can watch a fungus crawl through a rat maze to get to food. And if you look into mold and fungus some more, you can watch videos of fungus infecting ants and making them crawl up um, you know, a blade of grass to die so it can infect a, gra a grazing animal. I mean, they are intelligent insidious creatures from outer space like they are monsters <laughs> <Yeah>. aliens <laughs> like that th that's where sci-fi people probably get their inspiration from and i just slowly started to learn how they behave um because most people nowadays are you know their strategy is to go on a ketogenic diet because you're because you're going to starve them out because they don't eat fats guess what they eat fats um you cannot starve out candida. Um, if, so let's say somehow you impossibly starve out candida. Say you don't eat anything. Candida is just going to get mad at you because you're not feeding it. And it's going to start eating your, your flesh. It's like having athlete's foot. Liam, you know, it's like, oh, you're not giving me food. All right, I'll just eat your flesh. All right, that's fine. Um, you know, it could do that. So let's say you somehow do starve it out. Let's say it doesn't eat your flesh and you somehow do starve it out. It's going to die and it's just going to drop its spores. And guess what? Hmm. Spores hang out, can, can live for 10,000 years. So unless you're going to fast hmm. for 10,000 years, I mean, you're not going to kill your candida that way. So you have to understand how they behave. And pretty much most of the articles online uh, do, do not understand that at all. But once you understand how candida behaves and you start killing them, that's when I was able to bring back starches into my diet. And even when you get to that point, the information on how to prepare starches correctly, because our ancestors would, you know, those are baby plants. They're, they're seeds, you know, and plants don't want us eating their babies. They can't run away. So what they do is they put these toxins in their babies. They put like gluten. Gluten, for example, the most popular anti-nutrient, um, which is never referred to as an anti-nutrient, it, it's a lectin. It's designed to rip open your digestive system. That's what it's designed to do. That's what the grass plant, you know, they were like a mad scientist in a lab, and they're like, I'm going to make this chemical that tears, tears up the insides of anybody who tries to eat me. Like, that, that's... That's what happened on an evolutionary scale. And our ancestors would use sour, the sourdough baking process to deactivate that. So understanding how our ancestors mm -hmm. prepared, like corn, for example, needs to be cooked in uh, lime. Um, you know, there, it's just like all these like different uh, one-off things that they did to deactivate these anti-nutrients in these foods. So it's a so healing the gut is a process of, you know, stop injuring the gut. That's the biggest one. 
you know, nourishing the body. And, you know, when you look at these health diets, most of these foods they have you eat like, oh, eat whole grains. That's going to rip open your digestive system. Um, oh, eat vegetables. You know, you don't have four stomachs to digest those vegetables. And guess what? When you do digest it, there's, there's practically no nutrition in them. Um, we want to be eating organ meats. And, you know, we did a video about that. Um, you know, raw milk, you know, that, that cow has been eating grass, like literally all day long to turn the little nutrients in that grass into milk for you. I mean, milk has white blood cells. It has antibodies. It has enzymes. It has vitamin A, has vitamin B, it has vitamin C. If it's raw, it has vitamin C. It has vitamin D. It has vitamin E. It has vitamin K. Yeah. I mean, what more could you ask from a food? Exactly. Yeah, and, this and, is also yeah. the thing why it's kind of uh, uh, dangerous to be consuming vegetables, nuts, and seeds in a raw form. Mm -hmm. And that's what I experienced. I went yeah. uh, raw vegan for a while. And actually, I was doing so much more damage on my digestive system than I thought consuming all these raw plants, raw nuts and seeds as well. Oh. And I, I, I read it also in your book how, uh, like now, people are focusing more on, on the, the raw peanut butter and the raw uh, nut butters and stuff. It's not mm -hmm. the way to go. Like you said, My worst flares them, them. were from raw nuts. <laughs> like, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, from raw nut butters. Yeah, Those were my worst they flares. They just look like they're so hard to digest as well. They're super hard. Like, they're tasty. I, I really love... I haven't eaten them for a long time. They're mm -hmm. so good, but just looking at them and how hard they are, how are they... That, how's that going to pass through your digestive system if you don't prepare <laughs> it in a certain... Well, like, like grains as well. Nobody is going to eat grains in their raw form. Nobody's going to eat rice in its... Like, mm -hmm. when it's hard, like... So that's also a thing to think about. And yeah, be careful with, with the raw products, like raw milk and raw meat. That, that's like, it's more natural to, mm -hmm. to eat those foods. But plants and, and grains, they have all these um, ways that they are protecting themselves because they want to grow and kind of live like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, to, to um, uh, how do you say that they want to, I forgot the word, pro reproduce they reproduce. want to spread their yeah. seed so, yeah exactly yeah so that's that's what they do and they're trying to 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 um uh to shield themselves from mm -hmm. attackers on the outside yeah yeah and uh go ahead yeah i hear a lot of people say like uh or i, I even had this mentality like, oh, it's just plants, you know, oh, they make some chemicals, oh, big deal. Like, imagine eating poison ivy, like what that would do to you. If you look at poison ivy wrong, you're, you're just like, <sighs> like imagine coffee. Like, we are under the influence of plant chemicals more than you would think. Like, people drinking coffee every day, people eating chocolate every day. Yeah. Those are all mental stimuli, you know, marijuana, mushrooms. All these caffeine teas, like they all have huge effects on your body. Like it's it's not subtle. It's like you can eat yeah. ricin, which is a super dangerous poison from beans, a lentil, and that can kill you just like that. And you know mm -hmm. they they they're not messing around. They don't want you eating their babies. So. Exactly. So these these are foods we have to be careful of. Mm -hmm. So what do you recommend? Um, what foods do you think are good for healing the gut? Um, the best foods for healing the gut. So the, so, the, so the thing I like to do is I always like to look to Mother Nature. Um, look to the patterns of Mother Nature. And when we look at digestive systems and found in Mother Nature, we have insectivores have the simplest digestive system. Um, and then we have carnivores which are a little bit more complicated and then we have humans and we're like slightly above a carnivore digestive system and then we get into rodents and they have two stomachs it, d it depends on the rodent um, rabbits are more adapted to eat grass and and rats are more adapted to eat 
other sorts of things. And, and then when we get into the true herbivores, they have a ruminant, so they have like four stomachs. Um, they either have a huge foregut, and our ruminants have the huge foreguts. Their stomach is really big. Um, but other animals have a huge hindgut, and that's like the second stomach, the cecum, and, which is designed to digest high-fiber foods. And, they, and their digestive system is massive because they need to be digesting tons and tons of this food to get the nutrients that they need. So I like to look at those patterns. So the easiest to digest foods and the most nutrient-dense foods are... are meat and dairy. And what's very interesting about raw dairy is that all of these digestive systems, all of them, whether they have one stomach or two stomachs, they all tolerate raw dairy. Um, and actually when you're over here with the cows and stuff, half of their digestive system is shut down. It's not even operational when they're on raw milk because they don't need it. They don't need mm. it to digest the milk. It digests itself. And so I, I recommend people to do like a modified version of the raw milk cure. But we have to modify this diet a little bit. So we're addressing a few things that we're dealing with in the modern age. Uh, for example, we can't get the milk f fresh straight from the cow like our, like our parents or our grandparents did. You know, they were getting their milk unrefrigerated. We... We can only get milk refrigerated nowadays. And also, we live in the era of antibiotics, which is probably the most important factor. And what antibiotics do is they kill all the bacteria in your gut. And let's remember, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So when you, take, when you go on these huge rounds of antibiotics, for whatever reason, you pretty much destroy your immune system and you induce yourself with a fungal infection. I mean, that's what happens. And then they call it an autoimmune, they have the audacity to call it an autoimmune disease when they destroyed your immune system and they give you a fungal infection. And so, so when that happens, I mean, e eating the right foods is easy to do once you understand what's going on. The hard part is killing infection. That's, that's really, that's, that's where the trickiness comes in because it's in this closed box. You can't really see what's going on. So the, the biggest part of healing is, I mean, you can go on a keto diet and feel tons, tons better. And I actually recommend people to, you know, some people can go right on raw milk and raw dairy and start killing candida. And usually that's people with a mild infection. But people who have a bad infection, usually they have to nourish their body on animal foods and you know things like liver things like fish eggs um, muscle meat's fine but muscle meat doesn't really have much nutrition in it it's it's a liver you know get over it it's good for you um, yeah and you know cured meats it's 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 healthy food is tasty believe it or not you know, you don't have to suffer eating salads and I don't know what else, other health That's foods right. they have. They're talent nowadays. Right. So but. mainly um, like high nutrient dense mm -hmm. foods that raw dairy, for example, and, and liver definitely. And the muscle meat is not the main priority when, you, when you're mm -hmm. eating this way. Yeah. So you also, you, we talked about the foods that um, can wreck the the gut like mm -hmm. the the um uh, the raw nuts seeds mm -hmm. uh, vegetables plants um, but are there any other foods you would say people should avoid with gut issues we know there's a difference between people that have infections or mm -hmm. people that have some type of le leaky gut or their 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 gut is damaged what are other types of food people should avoid that uh, could mess with the digestive system? Um, so I would really say that nuts, seeds, grains, and legumes and tubers, those are the foods that have the anti-nutrients in, in them. And you need to be careful on how they're, pre on how they're prepared. And, you know, I'm, I'm still working through every single, you know, I know how they prepare potatoes and I have a pretty good idea on how to prepare bread correctly, but this is, 
it's all very nitty gritty details that are not well even in the Weston A price community um, you know they know they know they know a lot they're probably the best out there but I, I still feel like we have some digging to do um, yeah uh, I raw vegetables oh man I remember eating carrots and salads and stuff mm -hmm. and then just coming out the under en other end like nothing had happened and I've also heard people tell me in their coloscopy bags like when they have their colon cut out and they have a coloscopy bag you never see uh -huh. meat show up in the bag but you see plant fibers show up in the bag all the time oh, it's whoa. disgusting yeah whoa um yeah it, 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 people it, really get get uh confused i think because nowadays people are really really pushing plants mm -hmm. and to have yeah plants as, their, as your main substance of your diet and reduce the, the, the animal products because they, they mentioned like high cholesterol and all kinds of other mm -hmm. diseases are coming from the meat and, and dairy. But when you really look at the hard facts and the hard science mm -hmm. and what you're showing, for example, the, the example when the, how, how did you call that back that people have there where, where they saw the plants and not raw meat? How do you call it? They that call them back? a coloscopy bag. But what's funny coloscopy is yeah. if you talk to a biologist or is like someone who understands digestive systems, they know vegetables get digested in the colon. So why would you mm. tell somebody without a colon to eat vegetables? It's just stupid. <laughs> it's just yeah, dumb. It's so logical. Yeah. yeah. It's, How you it's that. just looking for patterns in Mother Nature. Like a hammer's designed to hit a nail, not try to smash a screw. You're never going to drill a screw in with a with a hammer you got to use a screwdriver and it it's just a little bit more complicated with that with um you know digestion but where things get kind of where things get complicated when dealing with infection and and we have a lot of information on our channel on like the real ways on how candida behaves and and what you need to do because because what you kind of need to do, the big thing you need to do is get your digestive system. Um, you need to create an environment where the bad, where the good guys, they love that environment and then the bad guys hate it. So it's all about creating that, uh, that nice environment. Because if you have like a nasty environment, the nasty guys grow. But if you have a nice environment, the good yeah. guys grow. Exactly. Um, yeah. It needs to find a balance, a symbiosis between all, all the living creatures inside of you. It's not that you just kill this one and then it will be fine. Like everything works yeah. together in a way. And people f f forget that. that. That's why they say, yeah, follow this diet, this will work. Mm -hmm. And then this person has another diet and this will work. But they're all kind of trying to uh, cover up the symptoms and not mm -hmm. looking at the underlying mechanisms like what mm -hmm. is actually the real problem what is causing the problem mm -hmm. and that's I've noticed in your channel and uh, what you have been talking about that you're really looking at what is causing this and trying mm -hmm. to solve that problem instead of just covering up of the symptoms yeah and I've also like I, I've, I've read your this book you have sent it to me and I've read it Something. and it was really fun to read because you, you mentioned a lot of um, um, like health, health myths. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, I'm going to say, say one, like sugar isn't good for you. Like everybody, everybody thinks that like sugar mm -hmm. is something you really need to avoid. And, and, but you mentioned like things like raw honey that is really beneficial, beneficial mm -hmm. for you. And there's also a lot of other types of, of sugars that are not the refined fake sugars we create mm -hmm. in the laboratories or extract out of out of things, uh, which we can consume with a healthy gut if, if we have solved that problem. And mm -hmm. they're not the bad guys. It's usually your body that needs to be yeah, healed or it's mostly the body and not the thing that is you're ingesting. Mm -hmm in most cases but uh yeah i really enjoyed this one and uh, this we can also find this on your website um we have that on amazon it's on amazon so you can i don't know if it's available in europe i don't i don't know if oh. it, wait, it might be available in europe and um but yeah you can buy the ebook and, I, and it's also an audio book format on my website so okay. Yeah, because I really enjoyed it. it. It made me really curious to investigate these topics even further. Like, there was also one you mentioned about uh, like alcohol isn't good for you, but you 
talk about why it is good for us. <laughs> and yeah, it just makes might makes you really curious. So thank you also for sending that. And You're I welcome. also wanted to ask, like, thank you for your time. Uh, where can we find you? Like, what uh, on what social media spaces? Um, pretty much all my contents on YouTube. I have yeah, just go to YouTube. That's where I'm most active, you know, uploading videos at least twice a week. Um, Yep, and you know we read your comments. You know we love your ideas. Um, you know most of the video ideas are influenced by your guys' comments. But yeah, yeah, YouTube. Check so us out if on you YouTube. do, you want to uh, do you want to add anything before we end the video? Um, I th think that's it, guys. Um, the only thing I, w I just want to remind you guys of is because it's, it's very overwhelming to you get diagnosed with Crohn's or, you know, even in, in the process of getting diagnosed with Crohn's or colitis or IBS, you know, they're, you know, oh, you might have Crohn's. Oh, you might have IBS. And they send you on this wild goose chase. And they're, you're literally paying thousands of dollars in these tests and stuff like that. To te they're, they're literally just telling you in Latin that you have an injured gut. Like, it's ridiculous. And <laughs> it's... Once you understand, I did not start to get better. Like I was doing Weston A. Price and I was feeling better and all that, all that jazz. But once I understood gut disease was just an injured gut and I, there was only five things I can do. And we talk about these five things more on our web, on our, on our YouTube channel. Once you understand these five things, um, those are the only five things you can do to injure your gut and you can start moving in the, in the healing direction versus because right now, every time you eat a meal, you're either damaging your gut or you're either healing your gut. So we need to start, you know, moving in the right direction. And I want to show you guys how to do that because everything online is just, I mean, there's a lot of good things online. But, I mean, it's, it's like statistically impossible to do, like, the right thing. I mean, yeah, you really have to know what's going on. And, yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge on here. I hope you guys will check him out. I will leave everything in the description box down below. And uh, yeah, if you have ever suffered of gut issues or have problems, tell us about it in the comments or go to his channel, of course, to find more information on it. But sharing is caring. So I, I think we can all learn from each other. Just let know you uh, share your thoughts and share your story down below. And yeah, I want to thank you very much for watching this video and thank you, Michael, for being here. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks for having me, Crystal. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.